pre-production. This can and probably will happen during the writing process, but don't think you need to finish the writing process before this can start. While writing, you can start looking for actors and locations immediately. The sooner the better, the more time you'll have, and the sooner you'll get to getting into production. Uh, this one's a doozy. Budget. This is where the rules don't really matter. Get money in any way you can to make your short film happen. If you've kept things easy on yourself during the writing process, you can get by pretty well and cheaply with the right help. Save money up on your own. I've funded my previous short films all on my own through my full-time job. Maybe not the smartest, but hey, they got made. Fundraisers like GoFundMe and all that kind of thing could help, but be warned, it's, it's a whole other animal that I don't even want to get into. So if you're interested in doing that, Godspeed. Just ask. Ask your family, friends, colleagues, whoever. Every little bit helps. I know asking sucks. Asking for money in particular sucks, but you never know. And it all doesn't have to come from one person. Every little bit helps. Enlist help. If you have talented friends, your budget goes down tremendously. Do you know anyone that can act in it? Shoot it for you. That has locations that can help you edit it. Whatever. The more you can take off your plate and not have to do on your own, or pay an expensive professional to do, the better. I'm not saying don't compensate the people that are working for you. If you can, you should. But it's going to be a lot cheaper than hiring professionals. Luckily, my crew loves food and booze. That was enough for them, and it might be enough for yours. And don't rely on one source to fulfill your budget. Uh, do whatever you gotta do to get it. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying go out and work the corners or anything, just be crafty. Casting. can come from anywhere, really, but uh, you can use casting sites like Casting Networks or Backstage. Use social media. There are plenty of Facebook filmmaker and actor groups out there you can tap into. Uh, you can use Craigslist, but be careful, I've heard some horror stories. Use friends and family and colleagues. If they are into acting and can, use them. And ask those friends, family, and colleagues if they know anyone that would be a good fit. You never know. Poach others from existing works. Doesn't hurt to shoot for the stars, but it's not exactly realistic. Uh, aim for lesser known actors, maybe some YouTubers, things like that. Just ask. Write for actors. If you have an actor in mind or know of an actor, write the role for them and it will save a lot of time to actually get going. But don't entirely rely on one actor or their schedules or availability. Just make sure you have some backups in mind. When you've figured out your actors, get to know them. It'll be a lot easier on set and the whole process having a rapport with your actors and knowing them and you know them. Wait, what? If they know you and you know them, it'll be a lot easier on set and a much smoother process, especially if you plan on directing. No matter who they are or where you found them, ask them to audition. I don't care if Tom Cruise is interested. Ask them to read lines or act out a scene for you. You gotta try before you buy. And it doesn't have to be in person. They can send videos. Just be specific about what you want. Not that you can't hold physical auditions, but having the option of them just to send you videos is a lot easier for them and it's respectful of their time. Locations. If you've written for this part in mind, you will only have one or a few locations to worry about. This is another time to call in favors. Chew. I gotta stop drinking during these. Chances are you know someone that has a house to use or some other location that you need. Like budget, it doesn't hurt to ask. Even in less film friendly towns, there are plenty of businesses out there that are open to having filmmaking happen. Just like asking someone out, the worst thing they can say is no, and then you're right back where you started. A lot of states and cities have film offices with websites where you can easily find locations. A lot of these do require budgets, but hey, if you've written with that in mind, you should be okay. And a lot of these are state-sanctioned locations that will require production insurance, so that will eat up budget too, so just keep that in mind. You can always fake it to make it. When done right, a green screen or blue screen can do wonders. Just make sure you know what you're doing or your cinematographer knows what they're doing. Or you can be lucky enough like me to have an Unreal Engine LED wall at your disposal, where you work, but that's 
It's just not. Sorry. Get creative. If you feel like you've exhausted all options, others have been in your shoes before. Do your research. Someone's gonna help. There's a way around everything. If all you need is a house, use your house. Uh, it's nothing cheaper than that. Um, my entire last short film was shot at my previous house, but granted it's a horror movie and you can get away with a house in a lot of scenarios. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but have this in your head early on. Or if you're writing for locations you know or think you will have access to, the easier it'll be in the end. You'll save a lot of time and money. No matter what route you go, you want to make sure that your locations are going to be available when you need them and for how long you need them. The less you are beholden to others' rules, restrictions, times, all that, the better off you'll be. Props. Yet another thing to be aware of in the writing process. Adding too much props will eat up your budget. Keep them at a minimum, or at least to what you know you will have available or think you'll have available. This doesn't mean avoid using props. Props are a great way to tell a story, especially through symbolism. Just don't get carried away. If you're crafty, you can make props on your own or piece them together on your own. There's a lot of tutorials and stuff out there on how to do all this, so do your research. If you're using weapons, please know what you're doing or hire someone that knows what they're doing. I used an actual firearm in my last movie, but I also know what I'm doing and I'm trained how to use it. So I trained my actress on how to use it and she handled it beautifully. Just don't be stupid or you'll end up making an entirely different movie that'll be popular on Reddit for about a day or so for all the wrong reasons. Planning and scheduling. Plan everything to the ridiculous. Production will always be a shit show no matter how much planning and scheduling you throw at it, but the more you can do up front, the better chance you have. So know exactly what you're shooting, where you're shooting it, when you're shooting it, and in what order, meticulously, before you begin. This doesn't mean you won't have the opportunity to be spontaneous during production. In fact, quite the opposite. If you are on schedule, you'll have more time to try things out. It's best practice to schedule your shoot per location. Shoot out of order and get the shots you need per locations. This will save days and days of time. If you only have one location, break your schedule down into parts or rooms of that location. If you are on a tight schedule and you have shots in your film that don't require your actors or seeing their faces, fake it to make it. Use yourself or others later on as pickup shots. In my last film, I used my wife's hands holding a gun in the same wardrobe that my main actress did. So focus on getting what you need when you have your actors and locations. If there's anything you can fake or shoot around later without those things, it's not the end of the world if you don't get it. Planning pickups later on alleviates a lot of stress. If you have everything planned out to a T as you should, you set yourself up for production to run very smoothly. It never does. But at least you can be confident that you've done everything in your power to plan that it doesn't. Water, not booze. Make sure your cast and crew and anyone else involved in production knows the plan as well as you do. Over communicate. With everyone on the same page, there's less a chance for surprises. If everyone knows what's going on, the smoother things will go. If anything changes, make sure everyone knows. There will be surprises ahead, so the more you can minimize the preventable ones, the better it will be for everyone. Don't pack too much into one day. Be realistic. If you can, try to spread your schedule out over a few days or a couple weekends. Not only will you have much more time to make a better film, but everyone will thank you for it. No one wants long ass days and nights shooting your low budget to no budget short film. Booze and pizza only go so far. Gear. Other than budget, this is the best area to call in favors. Unless, like myself, you do this for a living and already have a lot of the gear you're going to need, you're going to have to get it somewhere. You'll either need to call in favors for people who have it or buy it and rent it and learn it all on your own. If you're working with a cinematographer or a DP, Chances are they already have a lot of their own gear, or at least know where to get it for cheap or rent for cheap. Rent versus buying. Rental houses are everywhere, so use them if you need them, but most of them will require production insurance. But if you really want to buy gear, you really don't need that much to make it work. Contrary to popular belief in the industry, you don't need the most expensive gear to make it work. So don't let it break your budget. You don't need a lot of gear. You can get by with a lot less than you think. And also, if you have this in mind during the writing and pre-production process, you can bypass a lot of it. 
You can buy used from trusted sources, of course, but you can find a lot of great used cameras and gear all over the place, but just know what you're looking for. If you don't know what you're looking for, rely on your cinematographer or DP to help you. Testing. Test everything you're using. Even though there will be, you want to test as much as possible to help prevent any malfunctions or surprises on set. Do a dry run of your film with just you or just you and your cinematographer. You just need your camera. You don't even really need lighting or the right location or props or your actors. Grab your camera and very roughly shoot out the shots you'll need with a stand-in. Or you can even just crudely use your hand to stand in where your actors will be in frame. You can piece all this together and already have a really rough framework of what you're going to be shooting. How much time we got? Oh wow, I'm eating through footage. Let me speed this up. Production. It's finally time to start shooting. I'm not going to get into the gear and technical side and all that stuff. That's a whole other thing and others do that a lot better than I can. If you've done all the upfront work you need to to prepare, production can be a breeze, but there's always going to be something that comes up. Gear will not work. It's inevitable. Even if you've done all the proper testing and made sure nothing's wrong, something's going to happen. So be prepared to troubleshoot or have your cinematographer be prepared to handle that. Unless your shot really calls for it, you don't need to shoot everything in the highest settings. Unless your shot calls for heavy VFX work, there's really no reason to shoot anything higher than 4K. In fact, most festivals don't even really accept anything higher than that. Shooting in a higher resolution can have its perks and posts if you need to push into a shot or whatever, uh, but if you're doing everything right in production and have everything planned out as you need, that should be minimal. And you don't want to break your bank on expensive hard drives or raids or an overly powerful editing machine to handle that footage. Unless you have it already, then shit, go for it. Sound is just as important as image, so don't overlook it or skimp on it. And really, just just hire a sound person. That's, that's the best advice I can give you. Or give that job to someone who knows it and wants to do it. Just don't do it yourself, trust me. Bad sound is just as bad as a shitty image. Lighting is everything. Without it, you do not have a movie. Know it and know it well, or have a DP that knows and knows it well. And if you're directing, whatever, it, it can't hurt. Lighting is super important. If you're directing, be sure you know what you want. Even if you're wanting a more collaborative environment during production, you still need to have a command and control of your set to allow that sandbox to happen. Easier, quick, and smooth doesn't necessarily mean better. Not every shot has to be a hill to die on, but if it isn't 100% what you want and you're not happy with it, don't settle. Shoot until you get it, within reason. Don't let a shot of a glass of whiskey sitting on a table wreck your whole schedule. Again, don't wear too many hats. I know a lot of times this is going to be unavoidable, but the more hats you wear, the more things will suffer and fall through the cracks. Even if you can do everything or want to do everything, you'll never do it as well as someone who does just that one thing. If you're directing, it's your job to direct those others to do those things for you. Just like writing, be open to suggestions, thoughts, and criticisms, but always stay true to your vision. Ben, don't break. Always listen to your cast and crew's input, but don't do it just to appease them. You don't want to be a pushover. My cast and crews have had great ideas that have helped my films be better films. Uh, some ideas just aren't doable or aren't aligned with your vision. Both of those outcomes are great, and you're not going to be hurting anyone's feelings. Make sure someone, preferably not yourself, is staying on top of footage. Do not shoot everything onto one card or one hard drive the entire day. Shoot on multiple medias and dump them as often as you can. Redundancy is key. This means not only shooting on multiple cards or hard drives, but also dumping to multiple hard drives. You don't want to risk anything, trust me. Get everything you need to get with those actors and those locations, but be respectful of your cast and crew's time. Their time is the most important thing, except food. Feed your team. None of us are really making any money on these short films. So the very least you can do is give them food. Now don't just drop a couple packs of Welsh's fruit snacks onto a table. I'm talking full meals. A well-fed team is a happy team. If they're drinkers, like mine, a little alcohol goes a long way. 
Just save the heavy drinking for the martini shot. All right, I don't know if I can do posts in 11 minutes. This is fucking hot. Let me put another card in. Pause.